Welcome to the Southwest Prostate Cancer Diagnosis Dashboard. Over the next few minutes we will take you on a virtual tour of the dashboard, walking you through the various metrics showcased within, along with the interactive functionality integrated into the dashboard. The project began in 2018 as a collaborative project between the two Southwest Cancer Alliances and South Central and West Commissioning Support Unit. 13 trusts currently submit data to the dashboard. The homepage provides a list of these trusts, along with background information on the project, and also descriptions and definitions of the various terms used throughout the dashboard. Of note are the definitions of MRI score and histology grade group. These two key metrics are used throughout the dashboard and are explained in detail here. The data in the dashboard has been grouped together into various metrics, which can be accessed by clicking on the links at the top of the page. We'll start with the referrals tab. This page provides a high-level overview of the data, showing numbers of referrals, age breakdowns for all patients and for all patients who have had an MRI, PSA values, and also the type of initial consultation. At the time of recording, the dashboard contains just shy of 16,000 records, with more data being submitted every month. This is reflected on the number of referrals chart. You can hover over each chart to view the data in more detail. The type of initial consultation chart is a very interesting chart to look at as it shows the wide variation from trust to trust. Beneath this chart is a control which allows you to select which type of consultation the graph should be sorted by. The default is telephone triage with nurse, but if you wanted to sort by face to face with consultant for example, we can select that here. The chart is then reordered so we can now clearly see which trusts have the highest and lowest percentage. Also to note is the filter panel on the right hand side of the page. These controls are present on a number of the tabs within the dashboard and allow you greater control over the data available to you. You can select the range of records to display, from all data, last 12 or 24 months, the last X number of records, or a particular year. You can also use the sliding control below to isolate a specific range of dates within the database. You are able to drill down to individual trust level using the site controls at the top right. Click on the trust to filter the charts to only display their data. You can also hold control to select multiple trusts if desired. Towards the bottom there is a minimum denominator control. This allows you to set the threshold number of valid records that must be met in order for a trust to appear on a chart. By default this is set to 5, so a trust must have at least 5 valid records to be shown. However, if we set it to 100 for example, you will see a number of trusts disappear from the charts. This means they do not have 100 valid records for those particular metrics. Denominator bars adds additional markers onto some of the charts within the dashboard to provide a visual representation of the sample size used for each chart. You can also reset your selections using the button at the top of the page. Next up we will look at the MRI data which is split into two pages. Page 1 displays information on referrals who have had an MRI, percentage of MRIs performed as MP MRI, a composite breakdown of MRI scores, the percentage with significant cancer and percentage with high risk cancer for each MRI score, and the percentage of patients with each MRI score. The bottom row of charts allow you to select the MRI score you wish to view. We can look at MRI scores 1 or 2, MRI score 3, scores 4 or 5, or MRI score 5 to see the difference from score to score. Page 2 shows percentage of MRIs performed at 3T and a breakdown of how the MRI score was recorded as well as a range of negative predictive values for multiple criteria. Here we have the MPV for patients with MRI score 1 or 2 with no significant cancer. The dark grey dotted line represents the MPV for PROMISE study. We also have the MPV for MRI score 1 or 2 with PSAD less than 0.15, the same for MRI score 3, and the chart at the top shows the MPV for all patients with MRI score 3. The two charts with PSAD allow you to select either 0.15 or 0.12 and will update accordingly. The biopsy tab is also split into two pages. On the first we can see the percentage of MRI patients that have a biopsy for each MRI score, the percentage of patients who have an MRI before a biopsy, the percentage of biopsy patients who had a pre-biopsy MRI, and also the mean number of cores taken. As with the MRI pages, you can select the MRI score you wish to look at. Looking at all MRI scores, we can see the variation from trust to trust. On page two, we have charts for the percentage of biopsies performed as transperineal, a comparison of targeted Gleason group compared to systematic Gleason group, and finally the percentage of patients who had an MRI and a biopsy on the same day. The histology page contains three composite charts, providing breakdowns of Gleason group, PSAD ranges and biopsy core length ranges. As before, you can change the ordering of the charts using the controls at the bottom. 
The Gleason group chart is ordered by the percentage of GG0 as default. But we can change this to GG1 or GG5 to get a different view of the data. The Personnel tab provides information on the biopsy operators, radiologists and histopathologists for each trust. Each coloured block represents an individual. You can hover over these to see the contribution they have made towards the total for that trust. Note that these are completely anonymised, only the trust data inputter has access to the operator's name. We also have a breakdown of the category of biopsy operator, showing whether they are a nurse specialist, consultant neurologist and so on. The missing data tab is used more for data quality rather than performance measuring. Here we can get an idea of the quantity of data received from each trust and identify any months that may have missing data. As expected, you can see the impact COVID has had on this data collection, as evidenced by the dip in numbers around April 2020. The charts also give the number of responses which have been provided as not available. This is given as an option within the data entry tool for when a response could not be provided, and helps us identify any areas which may need improvement or assistance. Using this information, we can work directly with the trusts and their data administrators to ensure the data we receive is as accurate as we can get it. Under the other heading, we have provided our MRI and biopsy standards. You can click on each item in order to bring up the information for that particular area, or use Show All to view everything at once. The Pathway tab contains a couple of metrics around the patient pathway. Firstly, the mean pathway time in days for each trust, and also the percentage of pathways within 28 days, which allows you to view patients with both MRI and biopsy, MRI only, biopsy only, or neither biopsy nor MRI. Under Trends, there are a number of subheadings, but we will focus on Numbers and Pathway 2. These pages provide trend charts over time and are broken down at trust level, with each trust represented on their own chart. On the Numbers page, we can see the number of referrals, MRIs and biopsies per month for each trust. Pathway 2 provides the mean pathway time in days for each trust, for patients who have had both an MRI and a biopsy. Using the controls on the right, you can select a specific part of the pathway to be displayed on the charts. For example, referral to MRI, or MRI to biopsy, as well as viewing the pathway as a whole. The final page we are going to look at is the Highlights tab. We have picked out a handful of metrics from the Trends pages in order to provide an at-a-glance, high-level view of some of the key data within the dashboard. We have the mean pathway time for all patients, the percentage of patients with MRI score 1 or 2 who have been biopsied, the percentage of MRIs performed at contrast and performed at 3T, and a percentage of biopsies performed as transperineal. MRI strength has only been collected since the launch of the new data entry tool, hence the yellow line only appearing over the last few months. It is also interesting to see the push to move towards transperineal biopsies, as evidenced by the rising percentage over time on the bottom right chart. With that, I will hand you back over to Nick. Thank you very much for listening.